Yo, yo, yo. JV the villain. How you feeling? Ha <laughs> ha. Whole park can hear me. Goddamn right. What's your biggest regret? What is your biggest regret to date? Today? If you got asked this on the street at Walfart, if you got asked this at a club, what would you say? What would be your go-to? What would be the thing that just comes to your head immediately? Okay, put that in the comments. Because let's talk about it. What's your biggest regret? Now, y'all know one of my sayings. One life, one chance, no regrets. I live with it on me. Shout out to my boy. Shout out, okay? One life, one chance, no regrets. So I genuinely, I genuinely don't have any. I do have a situation in which completely altered my my mind my perspective on life and it all happened in high school i say this story multiple times but this is this is just a testimony to life not being about coincidences life not being about accidents there's no such thing as any of those things there's only incidents it's not an accident <laughs> You didn't stumble upon this person for no reason. There's always a reason. Whether it's more on their end, less on yours, more on yours, less on theirs. There's always a season, time, reason, place, and space. Always, right? So, when I was in high school, this is my first ever co-ed school. I went to all boys schools all my life. Ninth grade year. I go to my first co-ed school. It's a pri it's a private school, quote unquote, but it's a public school, right? We in they in that vision, you know, jeweling, smoking the jewels, twerking in class, going to the bathroom, go skipping through the hallways. Shit. It was a public private school, as I call it. And I was on the ninth grade team. So I I'm the new kid on the block, right? I didn't get recruited. Wasn't on scholarship like that, or nothing. I made friends, acquaintances very fast. But basketball was what I was there for. Basketball and the girls, really keeping it 100. <laughs> so, we had a ninth grade team and there was an eighth grade team. So, there was eighth graders that was on ninth grade team. And they had their clique. They, they had their group, right? And so there were certain people in that group that knew each other ever since they were like five, six, playing park ball. No exaggeration. So I was not in this bunch. Now, you know, you could play varsity or you could be on varsity as a freshman, right? That was not the case for me. I didn't even, yeah, none of that. We had different practices from JV, varsity. We had different practices. So we weren't even, yeah. 10th grade come around. Now I'm starting to be incorporated with JV and varsity players and, you know, go in the locker room, right? Getting more familiar with the team and everything. Immediately, I realize that this coach who I'm looking at, yeah, we're a, we're a winning team, but this coach that I'm looking at has favorites, and I'm not in that bunch. So what do I do? I start to overcompensate. Now, I've been playing basketball ever since I was a kid, so I know how to dribble at a high level. I know how to shoot at a high level. I know how, my IQ is at an extreme high level, okay? Playmake get my teammates open, be a team player, take charges, defense, whatever I, whatever we have to do to win, I'm, I'm with it, okay? And do y'all know the level in which my confidence went to? It's like I just gave this coach my whole entire heart. And he just had his way with it. 
So I would go to practice. I'm shooting air balls. I'm shooting free throw air balls. Now I know what you're about to say. Everybody air balls, JB. Everybody. But it was the type. You see, it was about the type of shots I was shooting and the type of air balls I was making. You, you see what I'm saying? It hurt me. It hurt me for a very long time. I didn't play. I didn't get any attention. I, I wasn't getting any looks. My confidence as a, as, a, as a young boy just shot because I built subconsciously my identity to basketball and basketball to my identity. Knowing that I am bigger than basketball and I am more than just a basketball player. You know, I'm very intellectual, very smart, articulate, uh, dance, sing, draw, paint. Yeah, I'm jack of all trades, right? And I knew this in high school. And I regret, if I had to regret something, this is what I would say. I regret giving this coach my whole entire heart, my whole entire existence, just to be on a team, just to play, just to play the game that I love. That's like you going to work and you giving your boss your whole entire heart, your whole entire integrity, knowing that they don't give a fuck about you. 16, 17, junior year, I'm on varsity officially, barely played. Senior year, barely play. Senior year, barely play. Senior night, I played a minute and three seconds. My mom was there because I, I didn't want them to come to any of my games because their son is not playing. <laughs> Ma, your son is not playing. What, what you gonna, you, you gonna be a cheerleader for the whole team? I mean, yeah, there's moms and parents that do that, but not, not with me. Because I'm used to, I was used to being a winner, a champion, a starter, even, even coming off the bench. I, I know at times when I would come off the bench that I'm going to provide and I'm going to play and I'm going to provide actual beneficial results to the team, right? I regret giving this, this coach my whole entire existence. I do. Because it hurt me. It really, it really brought me to a very, very, very deep and dark place in my mind. And I'm not a I'm not a dark individual. I'm deep, but I'm not a dark individual. But we're not going to talk about the things that happened after I graduated and after my senior year and the experiences that I had, especially when it comes to basketball and me traveling the world. We're not going to talk about that because that all made sense. That all made the purpose and that all made what I went through so well worth it. <laughs> we all got to do that shadow work, you know? It, it was it was for a very long time. It took me a very long time, y'all, to get over that. Very long time. But I didn't run. I didn't quit. I didn't quit the team. I had my remarks. I had I had my my mental stages that I was in. I didn't quit. I did not quit. I didn't train a lot of times. I didn't want to work out because I, I didn't feel it was worth it because I wasn't playing. I wasn't, I was asking them and the assistant coaches, what can I do to play? What more can I do? What less can I do? They tell me some little bullshit and I would run with it and I would use it and I would do that for weeks and months in practice. First one there after school, last one leave, getting shots up after practice. overexerting myself because kids are very impressionable. You want to be included. You want to be involved. You want to be heard. You want to be seen. <laughs> and I wasn't. That hurt me. But we are here shining bright doing everything that we said we were going to do years ago, decades ago. How you like that? How you like that? 